here. How do you want them? Give me the woman who reported it first, uh, the cleaning woman. Her husband's with her, the janitor. All right, both of them. You and your husband. Sit down, please. Uh, what was the man's name? Dr. Frank Peralta. Dr. Frank Peralta. All right, what happened? When I went in this morning to clean up, it was about half past seven. There he was, just laying there. You live at the same address, I believe, Mr. Benson. That's right, same floor. And you saw Dr. Peralta last night? Around 10 o'clock. He was coming in, I was going out. Was he alone? No, he had a young lady with him. You know the young lady? Never saw her before. Very pretty, very nice looking. Remember what she was wearing? Some kind of a blue suit, uh, flowers in her hair. Gloves? No, I don't think so, but I don't remember exactly. They were going in up to his apartment, presumably. That's what I assumed, of course. Mm -hmm. And that was about 10 o'clock? Around 10. Think you'd know her if you saw her again? I think so. We met face to face. I see. What do you know about her, Mrs. Dietrichson? Well, I live in the apartment just under Dr. Peralta. About 10.35 last night, I heard this thud on the floor above my ceiling. How do you know the time so well? I just turned on the 10.30 news. I heard footsteps on the stairs outside, so I opened my door a bit and looked out. <laughs> I was curious. Yes. I'm glad you were. What'd you see? A young woman, quite pretty, passed me and went out the front door. From Dr. Peralta's apartment? Well, I suppose so. But you didn't actually see her come out of his door. Mm, I'm not sure, but I don't think so. Do you think you'd recognize her again if you saw her? Oh, yes, yes, I'm sure I would. I got a very good look at her. She passed under the light. I see. You're Dr. Peralta's secretary. I was. What do you know about any plans he had for last night? He had an engagement for dinner with a girl named Teresa Collins. You didn't care for Miss Collins, I take it? I know very little about her. But I couldn't believe that Dr. Peralta was in love with her. You mean he thought he was? Oh, sometimes he did, and sometimes he didn't. But she treated him so wickedly. She kept him in such a state. But he was going to propose to her last night, he said. Teresa Collins. Do you know where she lives? No. But I can tell you where she works. She runs a magazine stand in the lobby of the medical building, where Dr. Peralta's offices are. Well. Mrs. Davison, you go first. Just look around, see if you see anybody you know. In the middle years, but not a bad little number at that. Keep your mind on what you're doing, will you? You go out with me and I'll buy you a steak. Good enough for me. I ain't kidding. Neither am I. Thank you. When I get out of this monkey suit, I ain't such a bad looking guy. Uh, Benson, you go. That's the girl, all right, behind the counter. You sure of it? Well, pretty sure. Pretty sure? Won't you swear to it? I think so. Still, there's something. Yes, I'll swear to it. Well, I hope you'll remember that. Don't you remember me? Sure, if you want me to. I remember you all right. Where'd she go? Well, how do I know? What about in there? That's the girl all right behind the counter. You swear to it? Yep. On a stack of Bibles a mile high. OK, thanks. We'll get in touch with you later. Looks pretty good. Miss Collins? Yes? I'm from the police department. I, uh, I beg your pardon. Good morning, Doctor. I wonder if you could show me something in the line of lemon drops. How about lemon drops? That's a very good idea. I don't know how I can thank you enough. Not... <laughs> I'm sorry. OK. I wonder if you'd mind telling me how you spent last night. Why? Do you mind? No, but... From about 8 o'clock on. 
What's it all about? Begin at nine. Will you tell me then? Sure. All right. I went for a walk in Jefferson Park. Alone? Yes. How long did that take you? Oh, I got home about 11.30, quarter of 12. For nearly three hours, you walked alone in the park? Well, not exactly. For about two hours, I was listening to the band concert. And then when it was over, I strolled down by the lake and sat listening to the singing over the water. Then it got chilly, so I went on home. And all that time, you never met anybody you knew? Well, I didn't say that. Anybody who knows you, I should say. My butcher and his wife sat back at me during the concert. Oh. What's his name? Mr. Peterson. Vine and 14th. That's where his shop is. Uh-huh. You speak to him? Oh, sure. We're old friends. I can check, remember? All right, check. Anyone else? Yes, the park policeman down by the lake. We talked for quite a while. You know his name and number? No, but we know each other. We've talked down there before at night. What's he? Some kind of sweetheart? Well, not till I get his name, anyway. Well, the truth is... And a boy named Nat, Nat to group, walked home with me. Where did I find him? He works at the True Value Shop at 15th and Vine. And he actually walked home with you? Go ask him if you don't believe me. I intend to. All right, now, what's this all about? Dr. Frank Peralta was murdered last night. Murdered? Stabbed to death, straight through the heart. Terry. Huh? Terry, what happened? Break it up, break it up. Yes, sir. Five, folks. Keep moving. Keep moving. It's all over, lady. Keep moving. Well, what do you want? Shaggy, but okay, the doctor says. All right, let her go. Are you kidding? Of course I'm not kidding. It's a free country, isn't it? You mean with two witnesses who saw a smack at the place? Against three who saw a smack away from it. Four smacking miles away from it. And I saw them. Three solid, tax-paying, God-fearing citizens. You know her and talk to her all over Jefferson Park last night. Nine o'clock till 11.35. Well, what do you know about that? I don't get it. I just don't get it. Don't make any more sense to me than Chinese music. Second floor front, Lieutenant. Thanks. How are you feeling now? All right, thanks. It sticks, you know. It sticks? The alibi. Oh, well, of course. It's the truth. That butcher now. He couldn't be in love with you. No. The cop might. Another other guy, but not the butcher, I don't think. I don't think so either. Guys generally fall in love with you, don't they? Some. Peralta? He was a very dear friend. Very dear. Why'd you quarrel with him? The elevator boy heard you yesterday. It wasn't a quarrel. We just differed about something. Rusty never liked him. Oh. Jealous? You think Rusty might have killed him? Why? Well, he was in love with you, too, wasn't he? For a policeman, you certainly spend a lot of time thinking about love. Yeah, I'm the romantic type. Thanks. You left-handed? Excuse me, is this visit social or professional? You gave the doctor his lemon drops with your right hand. I was born left-handed. Most of the things I've learned to do since, I do right-handed. I didn't like being left-handed. The medical examiner figures he was stabbed right-handed. What am I supposed to say to that? I'm just waiting to see. 
If you don't mind. We'll break it, you know. This alibi it may take time, but I'll figure it yet for dough. If you don't mind, I'd like you to leave. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. You and oh, your... Terry. That's it. My sister, Ruth. Why didn't you tell me? Excuse me. I was going to when the time came. Everybody knows it, so there wouldn't have been much use to try to hide it. Not at the medical building, they don't know it. No, not there. That was so we could take days off when we wanted to, when we didn't have another job. Do you make a habit of that kind of monkey business? All twins do now and then. Well. You're Terry, and you're Ruth. You've no idea how much this relieves me. That's nice. I was beginning to think I was losing my marbles. It's not always easy to tell us apart, that's true. So I see. Which one now was in Jefferson Park last night? One of us. That I know. Which one is what I ask? You or you? Oh, well, now, no use stalling about it, because I'll get it out of you one way or another. So, uh... How? Look, you don't want to make this any tougher than it is, do you? So let's have it and get it over with. Which of you did which last night? One of us spent the evening in Jefferson Park. The other stayed home and went to bed early. But how can that one prove that? And that's all we're going to say. Were you in Jefferson Park last night? Are you going to answer me or not? I'm not. You're only making trouble for yourselves, you know. It'll be all the harder for you in the end. How? Because you can't get away with a gag like this. It's, it's... What? Look, will you cut this nonsense out and be sensible? A man was murdered, you know. I'll give you one more chance now. And this time, let's see if we can get somewhere. Which one of you stayed home here last night? One of us spent the evening in Jefferson Park, and the other... But what one did which is what I'm asking. Which one did which? Okay, I'll just have to run you both in. Are you allowed to play the field like that? What do you mean? Can you throw any number of people you want to into court and tell the judge to take his pick? I'm afraid you're going to look awfully funny explaining that even to a lawyer. What lawyer? The one that's coming straight to the police station if we're not here to answer the phone any time tonight. Pretty smart, aren't you? Not dumb. Well, listen to this. Did you ever hear of a little charge called obstructing justice? Yes. Then would you like to reconsider? Me or her? Look, will you tell me one thing? One of us. Will you cut that out? Is there no way at all of telling you two girls apart? We're identical. I thought I told you that. It's all right, dear. He's not going to do anything. You don't think so, huh? No, I don't. I know what our rights are, and so would a judge. And one of them is the constitutional right not to say anything that might incriminate us. Constitutional right, she says. And will you please leave? Or do you want me to call our lawyer now? Okay, Miss Collins, I'm a policeman, not a lawyer, so I'll give you this round, but just one round, remember. So don't try to duck out or anything like that, because we're going to unravel this thing yet. The law's never been licked yet by one of these Rube Goldberg defenses, and it's not going to start with this one. And bring a warrant next time you come, with a name already written in. Say, what did you do? Did you read up on this before you did it? Never mind telling me. I don't want to hear it. Uh, I forgot to tell you, Lieutenant. Yeah? It's two of them, two twins. Did you get that? Yeah, I got that. Look very much alike, the fellow was telling me. Some people can't even tell them apart, he said. Can't they, really? Well, that's the way twins are, you know. Yeah, thanks. I can see you've got your eyes open, all right. Well, I try to keep on my toes as much as possible, Lieutenant. And don't think we don't appreciate it, either. Good night. Good night, Lieutenant. Thank you, sir. It's no use. There isn't even a piece of print on this handle. Gloves? Could be. You know, there ought to be a state law against the sale of gloves to murderers. 
You know what they do in the old days. That's no good. Ladies bruise too easy. Get me Judge Hill. Yes. Judge Hill. You know, Lieutenant, I was just thinking. Yeah? I was just thinking, maybe one of these babies has got a birthmark somewhere. And I was just wondering if it might not be a good idea if I ran back there and made a kind of a thorough examination of both of them. Just an idea. All right, now, if you're through with the comedy relief, here's a list of witnesses I want you to get after. Have them here at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning sharp. Got it? Got it. Oh, Judge, uh, Judge Hill. Lieutenant Stevenson, Detective Bureau. I want a couple of warrants for Ruth Collins and Teresa Collins. That's right. Charge suspicion of murder. Yes, sir, both of them. What? I'm going to hang numbers on their backs like football players. All right, bring her in. Where do you live, Collins? 492 Candale Avenue. Have you ever been arrested before? No. Turn around. That's her, all right. No question in the world. Bring her in. Know her in a million. Came to me face to face. Your name, Teresa Collins? It is. You two girls are held on suspicion of murder. What have you got to say for yourselves? Neither one of us intends to say anything until we've talked to a lawyer. Well, how do you like that? No one in a million, huh? What do you think, Doc? Really? No idea, Rusty. It's hard to believe she could have done such a thing. Oh, she didn't. I know she didn't. Those guys are crazy. Uh, you better have a lemon drop. Good for the nerves. Send them in. Will you go in, please? Well, they're not going to get me to say one word against her. I'll tell you that right now. I knew her too well. Dr. Elliott, Mr. District Attorney. Thank you very much for coming over, Doctor. Not at all, sir. Sit down, will you? I don't think this is going to take us very long, Rusty. You told Lieutenant Stevenson that you saw Dr. Peralta and the girl at the magazine stand talking and apparently arguing on the morning of the day Dr. Peralta was killed. That right? Uh, yes, sir. Can you tell me which girl that was? No, sir. You're sure of that? Well, I didn't know that there were two of them. Quite a coincidence, Doctor. Uh, quite. Scott Elliott, psychologist, B.A., M.D., and Ph.D., author of Twins, a Clinical Study, Mental Traits of Identical Twins, Twins and Siblings, all published by the State University Press. Your own particular field, in fact. Well, I have devoted quite some time in study to the subject. Did you know there were twins in this case? No. One at a time, twins look a good deal like, uh, like singletons. Incidentally, is there any foundation for the old popular belief that twins are usually penalized in some way by nature, either physically or psychically? No, no, that's a superstition. Well, that clears that up. Lieutenant Stevenson reports that you had some kind of conversation with Dr. Perala that morning. Would you mind repeating what was said? He asked me if I'd ever come across a case of split personality. Go on. Well, of course, I told him I had. And then he asked if there was ever any danger in such a case. He used the word danger? Yes. Or if I thought all that kind of thing was exaggerated. To which you replied? I told him I couldn't say. Why well, I couldn't answer him with a generality when it was obvious he had something specific in mind. And then he said something... Uh, Oh, I had a battle with her this morning, and I'm seeing her tonight. It's rather important. And we separated. Seeing whom tonight? Miss Collins, I supposed. Which one? I have no idea. Well, then, can you tell me now which one of these girls was behind the counter that morning? No. That's all. 
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for helping us out here this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Take the girls outside for a moment. You see? You're going to let them get away with it? What else can I do, Lieutenant? You haven't a witness that can tell one girl from the other. I wouldn't have a ghost of a chance in court. A kid just out of law school could make a monkey out of me with a setup like that. I couldn't even get an indictment from the grand jury. They'd want to know which one, too. But one of them murdered him, you know. I'm sure of it. And you tell me which one, and I'll put her in the chair. I have just as much concern for the proper operation of the law as you, Lieutenant. But in this case, we're helpless. If you have no more evidence than you've shown me, it would simply be a waste of time to try to take it into court. OK. Let's have him back. Come in. One of you women is a murderess. You've killed a man in cold blood. The other is an accomplice. But the law upholds your refusal to give any testimony under the circumstances. It also forbids the indiscriminate prosecution of more than one person in order to make sure of one guilty one. This protection now enables you to become parties to an outrageous and shameful miscarriage of justice. I have no words adequate to express my contempt and abhorrence for both of you. Now get out. We're free? You're free. Goodbye, Lieutenant. Au revoir, Miss Collins. Remember me? Stevenson. Of course, Lieutenant. <laughs> Come on in. Uh, sorry, Stokey. I don't mind ordinary music. It's the wonderful stuff that bores me. That's snobbish, you know. Well, this is an ordinary place. Where are the gimmicks? Gimmicks? Don't you witch doctors treat people with tinker toys? Oh, they're in the laboratory at the university. What about that office you keep at the medical building? Just a convenient place to get case histories. I don't practice, really. Would you have a lemon drop? Oh, uh, no, thanks. Sit down. Thank you. Ever given any thought to this? Twin case? I supposed you'd given that one up. Mm -mm. No. Not me. Not me personally. This is on my own time. You don't look ambitious. It's not ambition. I'm just peculiar. I don't like a perfect crime, not even in books. I don't like to think things are organized that way so somebody can beat a square rep. Yes, I've thought about it. I rather like those girls. Or oh, one of them, anyway. She seemed very nice. You don't know which one? No, I'm afraid not. I never had a chance to talk to them together. You think you'd know if you did? I imagine so. You couldn't tell that day in the DA's office, could you? No. You see, the whole thing just burns me to a crisp. Why? How do you know somebody else didn't do it? I don't. In the meantime, I'll play along with the twins, at least one of them. Do you realize, Doc, that one of those girls could knock that guy off in the corner of Broad and Main with 50 witnesses and we still couldn't hang it on her? Oh, I guess not. I could be in that room myself and see her plant that knife with my own eyes. And do you know I couldn't make it stick unless I grabbed her by the wrist and held onto her until I had her in solitary? I just can't bear it, I tell you. I can't bear it. So? So. First, tell me this. You're a twin expert. Do you know anything whatever about those two dames that would give me a chance to begin to work? Well, sure. What? The crime. The crime? Well, of course. You don't suppose just anyone could commit a murder, do you? You're going to have to be very patient with me. Just what do you mean by that? Character. Personality. Not even nature can duplicate character, even in twins. I interviewed a pair of twins one time so alike that dogs got mixed up about them. Once living a thousand miles apart, they both got toothaches in the same tooth, and each one had that tooth pulled out. Do you know why they were living that far apart? Why? 
because one was lecturing at a big Eastern university and the other was serving a stretch in Leavenworth. Different characters. I see. Well, it's the, uh, it's the same here, I should say. If you're right about these girls, one could, one couldn't commit murder, and, well, that's all there is to it. Yeah, that's all there is to it. Constitutional rights. Oh, well, another thing. Do you often interview twins? Often, but not for the police. What about the one you've liked? What about it? Suppose she's innocent. There's no particular reason to believe she's in any danger, if that's what you mean. Living with a killer? It's really not my business, that kind of thing. If one of them kills that way with a knife, don't you think there's a chance she'd kill again her sister if she ever became nervous about it? Don't about it. I'll never ask you the name or proof. Well, I'll bet not. I swear it on anything you say. Someday you call me and say you found the answer and I'll be satisfied. Why? I've already told you because then I'll know there's still no such thing as a perfect crime. The system worked. You still can't beat a square rap. Social regularity, huh? If that's your name for it. Well, it's out of the question, the whole idea. I'm not a detective, and there's no reason whatever to assume I could be of the slightest help to her. Besides, I didn't say I was in love with the girl. I simply said I liked her. But how do I know she wasn't the one who did it? You can't just look at a person and tell a thing like that. For all I know, she may have been killing people for years, both of them. All I said was that she was very pleasant, very nice, and it's... it's not easy to believe that... Why, you Mr. Lemon Drops! Well, it couldn't be anybody but Terry. How are you, Doc? Glad to see you. Thanks. You too, over here. Thanks. Still chomping on that cast-iron candy. I've told you before, I don't chomp it. I wear them down. Well, no wonder I never got it. Didn't you really? An expert like you? No. Nope. Obviously, you were both wonderful. Oh, I'd almost forgotten there was such a thing as kidding. Things haven't been so good, eh? Not so good. You saw the papers, those pictures? We're celebrities now. No work, you mean? One look at our face and f they don't forget. Not in this town. It's a little rugged. Well, you can't blame him. You saw what the district attorney said. I wish you wouldn't say things like that. Well, he knows. He must have read the papers. Everybody else did. I know, but... Well, then maybe my idea, that is the real reason why I'm here, maybe is some good to you as well as me. How do you mean? Well, I'd like to add you two to my collection of twins. Well, I'm the old twin student, remember? And I'd like very much to add you girls to it. Well, I'd pay you something. Of course, not much, but... It'll only be an hour or so each day at your own convenience. We did that once when we were kids in Chicago. Well, then you know generally what it is. Physical, verbal, psychological, the standard stuff. Are you quite sure you're not doing this for the police? I was gathering data on twins before I ever met a policeman. I was doing it long before I laid eyes on either of you girls. It has been my main preoccupation in research for years. And I'll probably still be doing it after you're both married and settled down with twins of your own. Uh, which you're very likely to have, you know. What exactly is your purpose in this? The purpose of all research. To learn as much as possible about the subject. In this case, to add to my knowledge of identical twins. And you'd pay us? $25 a week, a piece. Well, that's the customary allowance. And for that, I'd expect you to come to the laboratory at least uh, three times a week, separately, for not more than oh, two hours, anyway, on each visit. What do you think? I don't think we're interested. I don't like the idea of being a guinea pig. Well, I don't want to press you if you're afraid in any way. We have nothing to be afraid of, Doctor. Nothing but snoopers. Well, in that case, there's nothing more to be said. I'm sorry if I've given that impression, and uh, I apologize. I'm sorry, too. I think we should do it. I don't think Dr. Elliot's a snooper, and I know of no other reason why we shouldn't. We could certainly use the money. You don't mind being asked a lot of personal questions? Why should I? 
Oh, why should you? If it's for a good purpose. I think we should do it. Because there's no reason for us to fear it. Because we do need the money and because, well, we've always liked Dr. Elliot. Both of us. Well, then let's leave it like this. Talk it over between yourselves and call me. I hope you can see things Terry's way. But if you can't, I'll understand and no harm done. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Goodbye, Terry. I hope I'll be seeing you both soon. Goodbye, Doctor. We'll call you. Please do. What's the matter with you? Do you think that was very wise? Why? What are you afraid of? I'm not afraid. It's... Don't lie about it. You are afraid. You're more and more afraid every day. Why? Terry, you know very well what it is. You think I killed him. Why don't you admit it? But I don't. You know I don't. Then why are you so frightened? Terry, if they knew which one of us was in his apartment that night, you know what that would mean. He proposed to me there, and I said yes. Why should I kill him? I know that, dear. I know you didn't do it. I know it so well that I'm willing to do anything to keep them from learning you were in his apartment that night. That's the only reason I'm frightened. Believe me, dear. Please believe me. Well, then, is there anything about yourself that you're afraid for Elliot to learn? Oh, of course not. Well, then, stop worrying. There's no need for it. And besides, he's very attractive. Very good looking. I like him. You don't think we could fool you now? No, not anymore, Terry. I even have you spotted at the magazine stand. How do you mean? Well, I know some of the times when it was you and some when it was Ruth. Not all of them, of course, but some. What was the difference? I don't know. Uh, meaning I'm not sure yet. Which one did you like the best? Oh, you. Really? Sit over here, will you? Why? Why what? Why do you say you like me best? Because that's always the answer during office hours. What's this one? Uh, these are pictures of ink blots. Actually, the kind you probably made yourself when you were a child. Just blobs of ink and the paper folded over. What's it for? It's another way of examining personality. I'm going to hand them to you one by one. And all you have to do is tell me what you see there. What it looks like to you. Quickly? If you see it quickly, sure. As soon as you make something out of it, you tell me, that's all. You ready? Mm-hmm. Now, face that way, please. Now, what does it look like to you? It might be a mask. You see? The black slanting holes for eyes, heavy eyebrows, and pursed lips give it a fixed expression. Anything else? May I turn it? Any way you wish. Mm. This looks like the face of a white lamb with a black nose. It's got a mark on its forehead. It looks like a moth spreading its wings over a butterfly. And beneath its front paws are two men, face down, with their arms outstretched. It all seems symbolic of something. The lamb looks so innocent, but it has two men under its paws. Symbolic of what? The lamb of death? I wonder if you're really as cool as you pretend. Oh, no, I'm not. I don't think so, either. Outside the office, I'm uh, Robert Taylor with jet propulsion. What do you see in this one? What does it look like to you, Terry? These are two men, back to back, but they don't seem to be aware of each other. Now it's changing into the full face of a man with drooping mustache and slanting eyes. And this is a dancer, a woman, dancing with a puppet. Now you see the puppet reaching to pat a cruel rival that pretends not to see her. But all the time, he's trying to reach near enough to do her some harm. May I have a cigarette, please?
the way, uh, why did you leave Nebraska, Ruth? Well, we've been living on this farm for about a year, and the farmer's wife wanted to adopt me legally. The doctor said she couldn't have any children, but they could only afford to adopt one of us. Why'd they pick you instead of Terry, do you know? Oh, just happened, I suppose. No particular reason. There's not much choice between twins, you know. But Terry was very upset when she heard about it naturally. So we just decided to pull out, that's all. What do you see in this one? Well, these are two people in costume. And they're dancing around a maypole. And they're bending over because they've just about wound up the ribbons. Is that what you want? That's it. Anything else? Uh, turn it if you wish. Oh. Oh, these are two skaters, like in the ice show. And they're leaning backward with one foot high in the air and their arms extended. Uh, how did Terry find out, do you know? Hmm? Oh, the farmer, I think. He never liked it from the beginning for some reason. Was he cranky? No, I got along fine with him, but Terry, for some reason... Uh, what do you see in this one? Oh, these are two old ladies sitting back to back in, a, in an open street car, like the old cable cars in San Francisco, and they seem frightened. They've got... They're holding onto their arms of their chairs with their hands, and they've got their feet tucked tightly under their seats. Oh, look at those chins. And this is a drum majorette with a high bearskin shako. And she's very straight and graceful, light-footed. And she's got her knee high in the air. Thank you very much. Hello? Well, it's about time. Sorry I'm late. What'd you do, go through town? No. Scott and I just got to talking. Talking? After that ink blot stuff. Who do you suppose ever thought that went up? Talking about what? Oh, just gabbing. Chicago, movies, when we were kids. Not about us. No, mostly about himself. He was really awfully funny about when he went to school. He must have been. He was, really. Once he drops that office act, he's really an awful lot of fun. The way he used to be around the cigar stand, remember? Is that his line, down memory lane? I don't think it was a line. He just seemed to want to talk, that's all. Nothing romantic. I'm afraid not. Dear me, you sound disappointed. No. Not falling for him, are you? My goodness, Terry, sometimes it seems as if that were all you ever thought about, falling for somebody. Of course not. Just don't want to see you do anything foolish, that's all. Yes, Mama. Because I'm not convinced yet that he's being strictly on the level with us in this thing. Well, I don't know, of course. I can't believe it. Well, perhaps not. But if I were you, I'd be just a little careful. Not too friendly. Yet. Oh. If only we weren't so... I know. It's not very pleasant. But as long as we are, we'll just have to be on our guard with everybody. Particularly him. It's something I hadn't figured on, never even dreamed of. Well, I'm not going to ask any questions. I said I wouldn't and I won't. All I can do is stand here, a poor, broken-down old policeman, and wait for whatever you want to tell me. Well, you know the ink blot test. Mm -hmm. I've made several other kinds of tests to check and cross-check. But in the ink blot test, about 80% of the people who study the blots will see generally the same figures, the same illusions and visions. What the other 20% see in the same blots reflecting the true secret patterns of their own minds and personalities is quite illuminating and pretty accurate. Uh -huh. In this particular case, there doesn't seem to be much room for doubt about one thing. What? One of our young ladies is insane. Very clever, very intelligent, but insane.
Now, this one's called a free association test. And it's so simple that even I understand what I'm doing. Look, if all this is to find out which of us is the smarter, I can save you a lot of time. It's Terry. <laughs> is that official? You know, it's a funny thing about us. I'm older than she is, seven minutes and 55 seconds. But that isn't the way it feels. All our lives, she's been the older sister, always helping and protecting me. Uh, sit over there, please. And like a mother, too, actually, because we've been orphaned since we were 10. I wish you'd get it out of your head that this is a contest. I'm interested in absolute, not comparative results. Yes, Professor. You know something? What? I'm a very pleased man today. Good. Which I haven't been for uh, almost a week. No. Because you haven't seemed happy. I'm sorry. I was afraid I'd done something that offended you. Oh, no. Well, I didn't mean to, I assure you. It was something else. I was a little worried about something else. But it's all right now? Yes, it's OK now. Good, that's the way it ought to be. Well, uh, back to cold science. Now, I'm going to give you some words, one at a time. And as soon as you hear the word, you answer with the first word that comes into your mind. Not a sentence, just a single word. And answer as quickly as you can. That's the important part of it, speed. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Table. Chair. You ready? Dark. Night. Moon. Beams. Knife. Scissors. White. Black. Mirror. Death. King. Queen. Blossom. Flower. River. Lake. But how could you have said it? How do I know? It just popped out. But I don't understand all this fuss. What possible harm can it do? None. None whatever. I don't give two cents for that fellow in his kindergarten games. I can do that stuff 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and beat him at it every time. He doesn't frighten me with that stuff. But it's you I'm worried about. But why? Because it shows your mind still on that thing, and you can't deny it. When he said mirror and you automatically said death, that proved it. It may not mean a thing to him, but it does to me, because I understand some of that mumbo-jumbo, and it's a dead giveaway that it's still in your mind, and I had something to do with it. Terry, please. As I've told you, why do you... Why do you keep saying a thing like that? Forget it. But you've no right even to think. Why do you take those sleeping pills every night? Because I can't sleep without them, of course. Why can't you? Because my nerves are still bad. I haven't gotten over everything yet. Neither of us has. Is that all? Well, what other reason could there be? Not your conscience, perhaps. My conscience about what? Perhaps you're sorry you didn't tell the police all you know. Maybe that's what's troubling you. Maybe you're thinking you should do it even now. But that's utterly ridiculous. Such a thought never entered my head. Because if you are, there's the phone right there. Oh, Terry, stop it. You're talking nonsense. Am I? Of course you are. I hope so. Because if you ever suspected me, I don't know what I'd do. I really don't. Chair. Moon. Stars. King. Queen. Death. Mirror. Girl. Woman. Black. White. Rose. Thorn. I have an idea you aren't very much impressed with any of this stuff, actually, are you, Terry? No. Then why do you think I'm here? Just humoring the old professor, I imagine. That all? Oh, nothing else to do. Hadn't it ever occurred to you that I might like seeing you? No, it hadn't, to tell the truth. Don't you like to see me? 
If you knew how anxious I was for you to get here this afternoon, you wouldn't have to ask that. Honest? Very honest. Then maybe we could see each other outside the office sometime. Oh, we will, I'm sure. Would you like to? Very much. All right. When? Soon. Uh, but not until we finish with these tests, I'm afraid. What's that got to do with it? Look, it's hard enough for me to keep my mind on science as it is. Please, don't make it any more difficult for me. All right. But the first night afterward. It's a date. The very next night. Remember. I'll remember, Terry. Good night. I was really crazy about that boy, but Terry simply couldn't stand him. She insisted he wasn't on the level, and that's the way it turned out. He wasn't. How'd you find out? He dated her one night, and she told me. Terry's turned in, I guess. Um, how many men have you been crazy about? Oh, that was just kid stuff. We are about 16 then, I think. All this autobiography I'm giving you, is this for science, too? No. No, this is personal. The more I know about you, the more I want to know. I want to know everything about you that's possible to know for myself. And apparently you will. Good night. Uh, do you think when all this business is over, I can call and ask you out for dinner, dancing, or just to talk in a purely personal way? You think you'll still want to? That's what I'm looking forward to. Do you mind? No. I like it. You're a wonder. Good I'm not asleep. Don't turn on the light. I'll undress in the bathroom. better take two. Two? What on earth for? Well, if you take two, maybe you won't be so troubled in your sleep. You mean I talk? Talk? Cry? You scare me half to death sometimes. Good heavens. Dreaming, I suppose. No. You don't remember what you dream. Well, I don't remember even dreaming recently. You don't remember my waking you last night when you were sobbing. No. No, what you said to me. <laughs> no, what I say. Such big, deep sobs, as if you were terrified. As if you were seeing something so dreadful you couldn't bear to face it. You don't remember what it was. I don't remember anything about it at all. But I thought you wakened. No. <laughs> Pretty harrowing for a few minutes. I can't imagine what it was to frighten me so. Has it happened before? A few times. One night you were rather gay for a change. Quite gay, in fact. It seems to have been something about Scott. Oh, dear. You think quite a lot of him, don't you? I do like him, but... Does he like you? Oh, some, I imagine. Ever say anything? You know, nothing serious. Just casual things. Ever kiss you? Uh-uh. He may be just trying to pump you, you know. Oh, I don't think so. Don't you want to know what seemed to be frightening you? I don't know whether I do or not. You've talked about it before. 
in your sleep. You were worried about one of us being crazy. The old saying, you know, that one of twins is likely to be abnormal. But that's not true. That's a superstition. You heard Scott tell the district attorney that. I know. Why, that's an old wives' tale. We've heard it for years, both of us, but it's not true. Didn't you hear Scott say it wasn't? Yes, I heard him. Oh. This is so awful. It frightens me. The whole idea of talking and dreaming and sobbing and remembering nothing about it. Well, it can't be very pleasant. But it's not really so important. Just bad dreams. I know. Such a thought. What's this one? Uh, blood pressure, Terry, and pulse, while we're talking. You mean a lie detector? Uh, that's the easy name for it. Do you mind? <laughs> Why should I? What do you want me to talk about? I'll let you know when we're ready. How much more of this stuff have we got? Winding up this week. Friday afternoon, and that's that. The whole thing? Yeah, the work's complete. Then Saturday night's the night. Night? If you tell me you've forgotten, Oh, sure. Remember? Yeah, that's right. Well? Oh, I'm afraid I did forget. I'm terribly sorry. You mean you can't make it? We in the other night, but... What a man. And me thinking that you were simply living for that night. Oh, it's inexcusable, I know, but we finished so much sooner than I expected. Who's my rival? <laughs> you have no rival, you know that. Is that always the answer during office hours, too? Your memory's too good. Come on, let's get on with this now, shall we? And straighten that out later. Oh, there's nothing to straighten out. My heart's broken, that's all. Let's have the machine. Now, all I want you to do is answer a few simple questions. Not on any forbidden subject, so you needn't be worried about that. Well, it's all over the whole thing. Ask me anything you wish. Uh, does that go for Ruth, too? Well, that you better ask her. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, of course. Well, I hope so, anyway. You've both been through a pretty terrible ordeal. If you've managed to come out of it okay, that's... that's wonderful. Well, what are you going to ask me? Oh, you were telling me the other day about when you lived in Ohio, before you moved to Chicago, remember? Anything else interesting along about that time? Oh, offhand. Um, I believe that Ruth was telling me about a boy that she went with that you didn't care very much for. Oh, Freddie Eklund. Yes, I, I think that was the name in, uh, in Dayton. Why? What did she say? Uh, she just said that you told her he wasn't on the level and, and proved it. Was she complaining? Good heavens, no. She was grateful. You know how she depends on you. She was just rambling along about how you've always looked after her, sort of like an older sister, she says. Did she tell you that I knew him first? No, I don't believe she did. Well, that's the truth of the matter. I met him first and introduced him to her. And he didn't care in the slightest for her, and I knew it. And then he started going round with her, without her even dreaming for one second that it was actually me that he was interested in. Wasn't anything to see, dear. You're dreaming, I tell you. 
It wasn't a dream. I wasn't asleep. The whole room lighted up, Terry. I saw everything in a great flash. Now you're all right. There's nothing to be afraid of. Oh, but I was sure I saw it. I was sure of it. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. But what is it? What do you think it is? Oh, something's happening to me and I don't know what it is. I don't understand it. You're just imagining things. Your nerves are playing little tricks on you, that's all. Oh, I'm so scared. I'm so scared I don't know what to do. It's nothing, really. <laughs> Just remember I'm with you. And I'm always going to be with you. No matter what happens. <laughs> So that's all there is to it. Yes, that's all there is, I'm afraid. I didn't promise you a great deal more, remember? All I can say positively is that Ruth didn't do it. She simply isn't capable of that sort of thing. That I know. That does narrow it down a bit, though. Terry's a paranoic. A paranoic has no more conscience, no more sense of right and wrong than, than a two-year-old. Paranoic's capable of anything. That's something, but not much. You can't run loonies until they've done something, broken some kind of law. If their families don't see fit to commit them, you just have to wait till somebody's set on fire. Unfortunately. Pretty tough on Ruth. You gotta tell her, aren't you? I suppose so, but it's not going to be easy. Apparently, she hasn't the ghost of a suspicion. No? What about that double alibi? She could be tricked. Terry could trick her. Well, much obliged anyway, Doc. Yeah, sorry I couldn't have been more help to you, Lieutenant. Good night, Sergeant. Good night, Doc. You gonna see Ruth again soon? I expect to. Tell her, right away, no matter how hard it is. I will. Because it's six to an even, you know, the other one's gonna pop off again before it's over. It's quite possible. It's better than that, and watch out for yourself, too. Oh, I don't think I figure very seriously in our calculations. She didn't mind these tests. They were just another challenge to her. Another opportunity to show the world what contempt she has for it. That was the first tip-off I got on her. Thought you said there was no pattern to a psychotic's calculations. Well, it's... Don't be too modest, Doc. All right, I'll tell her. When? Tonight. Tonight, if I can. Good night. Good night. You know, it might help if Terry came out and spit on the sidewalk or something. Then we could pick her up. If I was that young man, I'd feel a trifle nervous. Yeah, why? Because from the way he tells it, whether he knows it or not, he looks very much to me like the new Peralta. Target for the night, huh? Uh-huh. That's the way it is, you know. The minute the doctor falls in love with the patient, from then on, he's about as useful as a papoose. Hello? Hello. Hello, Ruth. Hello, Scott. How are you, dear? Are you alone? Yes. Why? Well, I don't want Terry to know. Do you think I could see you alone sometime tonight? Of course. When? Anytime, whenever you say. Could I make it rather late? Around 11? She'll be asleep by then. 11's all right for me. Supposing I come to your apartment at 11 or a little after? I'll leave the front door unlocked and you come straight up the top of the stairs. I understand. Of course not. I, I couldn't be more pleased. 
Well, you know very well there's no one in the whole world I'd rather see walk in that door. I saw your light. I've been walking, and I thought perhaps if you weren't busy for a little while... No, no, no. I was just wondering what to do next. Not that it's anything important. Feeling, uh, feeling depressed? I guess so. Something like that. Look, if you had your dinner, then what do you say? Instead of having dinner with me tomorrow night, how about having it with me tonight and tomorrow night? Oh, I didn't mean... And as many other nights as you can spare, too. But tonight, my dear, I think we should have it with music. Causes hallucinations. Hallucinations? Things you imagine you see or hear. What causes them? Oh, bad nerves. Just nerves? Or a sick mind. May I explain something? No, no, please don't. I think I'd like to go home now. Would you get my bag and gloves? I'll wait for you here, and we'll go out this way. Of course, dear. I'll be right back. Headquarters. Uh, Lieutenant Stevenson, please. Lieutenant, this is Scott Elliott. What do you think of me in the role of a human booby trap? So you got the picture at last, huh? It's possible. Uh, will you still be there at 10.30? I want to talk to you about something that's come up tonight. Something that may be a little more in your line than mine. I'll be right here, partner, from 10.30 on. She loaded again? Looks like it. He's a very smart guy for a college man. I was worried. Where did you go? Walk. <coughs> With Scott? No. I haven't seen him. You just come in. Now I'm just going out to dance. I don't know whether I ought to leave you here alone or not. Oh, don't be silly. I'm all right. Have you been taking your capsules? No. Why not? They're no good. Well, maybe you don't take enough. But be careful. Don't take too many.
Look, darling. Try not to worry so much. No matter what happens, they can't do a thing without my consent. And I'll never in the world give that, believe me. I know, dear. So don't be too scared. We'll never be separated. You and I are going to be together as long as we live. Remember that, darling. Always. Good night, dear. I won't stay out too late. Goodbye. Come in. Oh, I'm so glad you came. Oh, I wondered about how you lived. I apologize for his neatness, but I have no woman around to keep it messed up all the time. I'll hold it. Could I get you something to drink? No, thanks. I hope I didn't alarm you with all that urgency and mystery. No, I was just puzzled that you felt you had to have some excuse. I'd have come anyway. You know that. Sit here. But it wasn't an excuse. I was quite serious. It's something I thought we should discuss right away, privately. But has it got to be tonight? Oh, I'm afraid so, dear. It's quite important. It's about Terry. You don't like Terry, do you? Of course I like her. But what? But... But I love you. Why? Why do I love you? Why me and not her? That's something I'm very curious about. Why did you choose me instead of her? We're so much alike. What was it you thought you saw in me that you didn't see in her? How can I answer that? All I know is that you're the one I fell in love with. What else do I have to know? Am I better looking than she is? Well, to me, you are, of course. Don't laugh. I'm serious. I want to know what you think the difference is. For instance, kiss me. Now, do you really believe you could tell that from one of Terry's? Or my lips from hers? I think so. Have you ever kissed Terry? No. Well, then how could you possibly know? How could you even say such a thing? I'm not sure, but... what well, I think I'd know in my heart. Would you really? I think so. Well, of course, I don't believe it for a second. But I wanted to ask you anyway, because, well, after all, it's Terry they usually go for. She's the one that really sends them. But that's not true. Well, of course it's true. Terry's a smart one. I've told you that before. Uh, no. No, they don't go for her. That's the trouble with her. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Well, I'm afraid I don't know what you mean. Well, it's not an easy thing to tell you, but I, I feel that I should. Terry's, uh, she's not well. She's sick, inside, and she needs help from you and from me, if possible. Sick? How? She's twisted inside. 
How it got started, I don't know. Some incident when you were babies, I imagine, that you've both forgotten. But there's a natural, strong rivalry between sisters. And ever since that incident, whatever it was, it's grown more and more bitter in her until now it's... it's abnormal. And she needs care and attention right away. Terry and I have never been rivals. Never. Not in the slightest. All women are rivals, fundamentally. But it never bothers them because they automatically discount the successes of others and alibi their own failures on the grounds of circumstances. Luck, they say. But between sisters, it's a little more serious. The circumstances are generally about the same. So they have fewer excuses with which to comfort themselves. That's why sisters can hate each other with such terrifying intensity. And as for twins, especially identical twins, well, you must have some idea yourself what agonies of jealousy are possible. Go on. People, men particularly, find it easy enough to like you. You're natural and normal. By the grace of God, you've managed to escape that poison of rivalry and jealousy. But not she. In spite of the truth of what you say, that actually on the surface there's really so little to choose between you. That is, of course, a lie. I'm sorry, my dear, but it isn't. It's the whole history of her case, by her word as well as yours. Well, that boy in Dayton, remember? And the lawyer in Chicago. And that family that wanted to adopt you, but not her. It's the same story over and over and over again. Whichever they met first, it was you they preferred in the end. I've never listened to such utter nonsense in all my life. And I called you tonight because I want you to talk to her about this. I want you, as the one nearest and dearest to her, to persuade her to go to her doctor and put herself under his care, and I want you to get her to do this at once. And if I refuse to insult her with such incredible rot... But you mustn't. I can't tell you how important it is that she get this care immediately. And if she refuses? If you refuse... Terry, I'm afraid I'll have to tell who killed Frank Peralta and why. I do. Not that it matters, because there's nothing you'll ever be able to do about it. Whatever you guess. Shall I remind you, anyway? If you wish. Peralta was killed because the same thing happened to you again. It was Ruth he really loved, without even knowing she existed. Oh, it was you he courted, took to dinner, the movies, and the dance, finally asked to marry him. He didn't know there were twins. All he knew was that every now and then the girl at the counter brought him a warmth that he missed at other times. That's what puzzled him. That's why he asked me about a split personality. Nor do I think you were aware of all this until that night in his apartment when he spoke of his curious difference in you from time to time. Then you knew it had happened again. It was Ruth he was in love with, not you. So you made sure that if you couldn't have his love, neither should Ruth. Who else have you told this to? I say, who else have you told this ridiculous story to? Nobody else so far. And there'll be no need to tell it again if only you'll do what I suggest. Now go to your doctor and be guided wholly by what he says. I see no particular necessity for that. It's just as I told you. There's nothing whatever you can do about it, no matter how strongly you feel. You don't think so? No. I'm afraid you've just been wasting your time. But haven't you forgotten Ruth? Not at all. Well, you must have, because I can assure you she won't take this ridiculous story so lightly. I don't suppose so. She's been behaving so strangely lately that I wouldn't put anything past her. But I doubt if anybody would take seriously the word of a girl who suffers from hallucinations. Or hasn't she told you? 
Just a minute. What do you mean by that? Where's Ruth now? Look. Are you so sure you know which one you've kissed? Of course I am. Look closely. Are you certain? Hello. Speaking. Have you still got that Terry there with you? Well, could you bring her over by yourself, or do you want me to send the wagon? Just a minute. Who is that? A guy from the hospital. I'll be with you in a minute. Sorry, Doc, but I'm afraid I got bad news for you. I got nervous after I left you, and I decided to come over here and take a look for myself. I hate to have to tell you this, but when I got in here... What? No. I'll be right over. Ruth's dead. She's killed herself. Does that surprise you? Terribly sorry, Doc, but I. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Miss Collins. Sit here. Uh, may I go in? Well, I suppose so, if you want to. The examiner's in there. You go with him, Franklin. Can you tell me what happened? She took some of this sleeping junk, apparently. It was empty on the washstand in the bathroom. She'd been taking it for the last two or three months. Miss Collins. I hate to have to ask you questions at a time like this, but did she have any reason that you know of? Yes, I'm afraid she did. What was it, Miss Collins? Her conscience. Oh, yeah? I don't... Well, now, take your time, Miss Collins. I'm not pressing you. I know it's a tough situation. I'm all right. It's, it's just I've been under such a strain, and, and now this. But she's free now, poor darling. And I have a right to some peace, too. Of course you have. Make a clean breast of it now, the whole thing. You'd be surprised how much better you feel. She killed him. She killed him? She said she didn't, but I know she did. I believed her at first. I kept on believing her for a long time, but now I know she did it. Take this down. That night, Miss Collins, what happened? When I got home from Jefferson Park, she was already in bed. I thought asleep. Then when it all came out, she got me to promise not to say anything, because she knew I knew she'd been out with him. You believed her then? Yes, but... There was something the matter with Terry. She was sick inside. She was twisted. You mean Ruth? No, Terry. I'm Ruth. It was a kind of deep bitterness. Wait a minute. I thought you were Terry. No, I'm talking about Terry. I'm Ruth. But didn't you... Didn't I what? Uh, nothing. I'm just a little... Uh... Go on. Well, then Scott found out about it. Something in those tests. And he told me tonight. He told me she was not right. She was sick inside, with jealousy. That's why she killed him, Scott says. He didn't know there were two of us. All he knew was... Just a minute. What are you trying to pull? I'm just telling him what you told me, dear. Just about what you told me, remember? But this isn't Ruth. This is Terry. Now, Scott, we've been over all that once tonight. This is ridiculous. I know this girl almost as well as I know myself, and it's Terry. How do you know? How do I know? I've been studying them daily for almost two months. Why have no more difficulty telling these girls apart than, than I have telling you and me apart? Can you prove it? Prove it? Yeah. All I know is that she says she's Ruth. She certainly sounds like Ruth, and unless you have some way of proving different... Shall I go on? You bet. I think we're beginning to get somewhere with this thing. Go right ahead. 
Well, the test only showed what I'd known for a long time, that she hated me, hated me from the bottom of her heart, because men found it easy enough to like me, but not her. It was the same story over and over and over again, whichever they met first. I'm sorry, dear. So are you, Doc? Of course not. The reason I didn't explain to you what I was going to do, I didn't know myself till I got here. It was only after a kind of a Dutch uncle talked with Ruth that the idea came to me, and then it was too late to explain anything, so I just had to take a chance, that's all. Well, all I can say is you aged me ten years. But under the circumstances, I forgive you. Do you want to know why I got nervous? Why? Psychological reasons. Oh? They rubbed off on me. I got to thinking about what you told me, and then it occurred to me that maybe Ruth was in more danger than you were. After all, even a nut can figure out that it's simpler to get rid of a rival than to go on knocking off her boyfriends all the rest of her life. I take back what I said about the police, Lieutenant. Thank you, Doc. Fourth floor, novelty department, 975, this week only. Was the mirror me? The reflection was. And that's what twins are, you know. Reflections of each other. Everything in reverse. And now will you answer one question for me? What? Under the circumstances, you're going to say it's impossible, of course, but... Why are you so much more beautiful than your sister? 